and welcome into the BC Wildcat Basketball Insider Show. I'm Nolan Alexander, joined by my co-host Brian Harvey here from Historic Moore Gymnasium, a place that was great to the Wildcats in 2017 and 2018. Brian, as, as we look at this regular season for BCU on the women and the men's side, I think you can argue this year for both teams has to be one of the most exciting and arguably the most successful seasons for BCU basketball, men's and women's put together. Absolutely. I, I think this season, you just said it all, Nolan, just right there. More Gymnasium was absolutely electric this year with games. I mean, it was some of the best atmosphere you've ever heard and ever seen. You had the crowd on the far side with the students. You had the crowd here on the near side with Ryan Ritter's family, Vanessa's family. It was absolutely electric. But then also you said it, some great road wins. That set up a February that was absolutely unparalleled. You talk about teams that were absolutely dialed in in the month of February, it was women's and men's basketball. And there's no, no, no comparison as to what they've done. This was an electric atmosphere at home and on the road, and it was absolutely fantastic. The women went seven and one in the month of February. The men went six and two. Uh, going back to some of those big road wins, the women won in overtime against Morgan State. The men won in overtime as well. I mean, that's a thriller. What was it like following that one here from Daytona? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I was on Twitter and I kept doing like this on my screen. I was like, refresh, 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 you know, trying to see what was going on. I mean, it just seemed like I'd see, okay, 30 seconds. Well, something's happened in 30 seconds. I mean, you know, it was absolutely fantastic to, to be able to follow those games, uh, to listen to the games. It was just something that, that you just got that feeling inside like I really think these teams want to win and I really think they're gonna win I mean you talk about Morgan State Hill Fieldhouse is a tough place to play that that's an absolutely atmosphere that those students get in there those fans get in there it's a place to where they kind of they bring you in it's a bigger kind of bigger venue it's kind of goes down with the funneling down with the noise and everything it's just one of those places that's that's tough to play and then you talk about Baltimore uh, venue that makes it tough for you. It's not gonna be any home frills or anything like that. And I thought Bethune Cookman came out of it. Absolutely fantastic, two overtime wins, like you said. It was a very unique women for the weekend without the services of head coach Vanessa Blair Lewis. We'll dive more into that later on in the show. But Brian, before that Morgan State game, the men won at Coppin State following the women's victory. In the Coppin State game, Brandon Tabb had a career high 34 points. That put him over 1,000 in his career. Brandon became the 30th all-time 1,000-point score in Wildcat history. What's more impressive, Brian, he did that in less than two seasons. Yeah, he, he did it in less than two seasons, and that tells you what kind of score he is. He's just a prolific player. He's one of those guys that when he has the ball, he wants to be the guy to take the shot. He wants to be the winner, but it, that does, that, that's not saying anything about him not being a teammate because he is. He looks for the open pass. He's just that guy that he says, guys, get me the ball. I want to make the team get on my back tonight. I want to make sure that I carry us to wins, I, I carry us to victory, but he's just one of those guys that you just love to see play. He's a scorer and scores are people that they say, you know what, this is me. I'll take it win or loss. I'll take the shtick. I'll take the, the pelters you want to throw at me if, if we win or if we lose. But I want to make sure I've got the ball. And he's just a scorer. And to do it in less than two seasons, like you said, that tells you how much of a scorer he really is. You said it, 30-plus points. <laughs> I mean, what more do you need to say about a guy from the 757, shout out to Hampton, Virginia, that absolutely – uh, loves to play the game of basketball and does it the right way. Brandon was one of three seniors honored before the Wildcats played host to Savannah State. Joining Jamal Gaines and Jeff Altidort. For the women, two seniors were honored, Emily Williams and Lindsey Edwards. Both those senior classes for the men's and the women's side. Very important to these programs in their history for what they've done over the years. And then they came out and this place was a highlight factory <laughs> against Savannah State on both sides, wasn't it? Absolutely. It was one of those games that where you said to yourself, look at that and then you say oh no look at that oh my gosh did you see that play it was just play after play after play from both the women and the men and then two good wins the men's game was just something that that i go back to and you and i talked about it a, a little while after the game it was a playground game that was condensed into an NCAA contest. It was one of those games to where highlights happen, one-on-ones happen, good team play happen, three balls happen. It was just a fantastic game, and I really can't tell you one of the more exciting games I think I've ever seen in MAC history. And on the women's side, another good win for VBL and, and, and that staff. Just absolutely fantastic win. And to send those seniors out, these two classes that have meant so much uh, to this program here at BCU, it, it just speaks volumes. Both teams had extremely strong Februaries. 
set and poised to take on the MEAC tournament in Norfolk, Virginia. If you can't make it to Norfolk, Brian, how do you follow along with the Wildcats, the MEAC tourney? Absolutely follow BCU Athletics, and that's BCUathletics.com. That's BCU Athletics on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Follow BCU Athletics. We'll make sure you get everything you need to follow the Cats in Norfolk at the Scope. And then also listen to this guy right here. Listen to Nolan Alexander on WELE the Cat. All right, Brian, thanks so much. A lot more to come here at the BCU Wildcat Basketball Insider Show. Up next, we'll hear from the head coaches, Ryan Ritter and Vanessa Blair-Lewis. At BCU, every game is a life lesson. A chance to show faith, respect, and sportsmanship. It's bigger than winning or losing. There's life beyond the game. Opportunities beyond the classroom. Responsibilities to our community. On a much larger stage. As ambassadors to the world. Leaders, champions, we are Wildcats. And we believe in faith, integrity, and love. Enter to learn, depart to serve. That's the Bethune Cookman way. Go Wildcats! The DNA of Bethune-Cookman comes from the heart of a great woman whose legacy lives on today in each and every Wildcat. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Great leaders always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us? In the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, success for our student athletes isn't just measured by wins and losses, points on the scoreboard, or individual stats. It's also measured by their performance in the classroom, in the community, and ultimately graduation. Our student athletes aren't just playing to win a single game, they're playing to win at life. Because games end, but life keeps on going. The MEAC, educating student athletes for the game of life. And welcome back to the world's most famous beach here for the BC Wildcat Basketball Insider Show. Alongside my co-host Brian Harvey, I'm Nolan Alexander. Brian, we're about to hear from the head coaches Ryan Ritter and Vanessa Blair Lewis. And before we get to their comments about their teams, can you tell us a little bit more of what they've meant to this program besides what we see in just the wins and losses? Yeah, absolutely. You talk about Vanessa Blair Lewis. This is a person that came in and absolutely changed BCU women's basketball. They became a winner again. You go back to the days of, of Alvin Wyatt when they were a winner on the D2 stage. Well, she came in and she made it a Division I power. I mean, she has made this team into a 20-win season this year. That hadn't been done since Alvin Wyatt. You know, Dan Ryan went and did research. This is a woman who is expecting her second child and has gone throughout the season uh, kind of building up to that, which is off the court more important than anything in the world. But this team to her is her family as well. And that's why the kids gather around her. They flock to her and that's how she gets these recruits. She's a family person and it shows with with it being her second child, but also showing I'm going to coach this team so much and throughout this season because I'm a mother to you as well as my own child. And, and then when you look at Ryan Ritter, what more needs to be said? This this man has changed the culture of BCU men's basketball, and that is not a knock to any coach that has come through these ranks. Not at all. He has just done it with a different style, a different flair, uh, a different going forward method with his staff, with his family. We're sitting in their seats right now. We're in Jen Ritter's spot right now. I feel like I need to apologize to Jen. I don't think she's ever looked this good, though, you know, and I'm just saying it. You know, I mean, I, I you know, Jen and Ryan, just absolutely fantastic people, and what she means uh, to this as well. You see the kids come over and hug her afterwards. That is because their family as well. Ryan has instilled his family, his father, his mother, everyone at these games. He comes from his games coaching to sit right here and jeer and, and get in the refs and, and talk to the crowd and, and get them pumped. Jen does the same thing. It just shows the culture that has changed. These people mean so much to this program, both the women's side and the men's side. And I tell you, so it's just fantastic to have them here. And I look forward to having them for much, much, much longer. Coach Ritter, you don't have to comment on that from Brian. <laughs> but let's go ahead and toss it over and sit down with Vanessa and Ryan. Coach, your Wildcats are having an absolutely outstanding season. They have seemed to grow right before our eyes from the first conference game to how well they played as of late. Where have you been most pleased in the growth of your team since the start of January? I think the veteran leadership is what uh, started us and what has uh, sustained us during this time. Mm -hmm. And I say that because the veterans that are now our seniors and, and our young juniors played with the seniors of last year. Mm -hmm. So the blueprint was set and they're able to just fill in those you know roles that were left and actually a little bit better because now we have more depth than we had last year. 
What does that mean to you as a coach to see this program at its current state where you have a roster that can do that? It means everything. Um, very few people know what the beginning was like when they see the ending. And I can sit there on the bench sometimes and remember, wow, I wonder how bad we're going to get beat tonight. Mm. You know, and now it's, now it's the other side of the coin, but it took work. It took a lot of sleepless nights. It took, you know, players buying in and believing in what we were trying to sell here mm. and build here at Cookman. We had such a special situation the weekend that the Wildcats went to Baltimore to take on Coppin State and Morgan State as well. You stood back here at the world's most famous beach in preparation for a new family member's arrival. It didn't come. But, <laughs> <laughs> but with that, we saw Chandler McCabe step out, help lead the Wildcats, Coach Travis, Coach Frank, the, the team step up as well. I take it you've got to have a lot of confidence in your assistants in this team to be able to not travel with them but still go out and expect them to get that W. Well, I don't think that this road trip started that confidence. The confidence was there well before the road trip. I have an amazing staff. All of them, as you mentioned, you know, took part in you know, making sure that this weekend, not just the games, but everything went well. What was it like watching those games, not being there coaching the team? It was awful. <laughs> it was... It was <laughs> <sighs> yes, you have all that faith in your coaching staff, but those players still have to go play the game. Mm -hmm. Like Coach McCabe, if she were playing, I probably would have just slept right through it. <laughs> um, and if Coach Frank and Coach Travis were out there on the floor, that would have been a no-brainer. I would have went bike riding. But they still have to get these young kids to go play in a weight game on a big stage, you know, with, like you say, the mounting pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was really tough to sit there and watch uh, just every quarter, every play, every turnover, and there was nothing you could do about it that they could actually hear. Mm -hmm. Everyone in my family heard, but, <laughs> but I guess I was too far away. Coach Blair Lewis, thanks so much for your time, and good luck the rest of the way to you and the Lady Wildcats. Thank you so much. Coach, this is a team that was picked ninth in the preseason. Now, I know preseason rankings don't hold much merit, but what does it say to what your staff and your team has been able to do to not only surpass, but I mean, blow out those preseason expectations. Yeah, I think um, you know preseason expectations and rankings. Um, sometimes they're they're very um, very close. Sometimes they're, they they don't have much warrant. So um, you know our, our staff and our guys, they didn't take too much to be in you know preseason ninth or tenth or eleventh or first. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've come with the same approach uh, since preseason workouts, and that was to get better one day at a time. And um, you know we're we're seeing a lot of success on the court, and and just really happy for our guys that, that they trusted in us to to come to work and, and commit to the process. We know the headliners for your team. We can go on about Brandon Tab, Sean Tres Davis, Sufi Diakiti, but who are some of the role players that have really committed to that process of getting better each and every day? Jeffrey Altidore, um, to to pick one right now is as important um, to a team as, as anybody there is. Um, he's tough, he, 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 he's very coachable, um, he, he's our best defender, he does all the little things that allow our, our guys to go score and rebound and, and, and be the headliners and stats, but um, Jeff Altidore has been huge. You know, we're, we're, um, have been very successful since implementing him into the starting lineup. Um, but I wouldn't be right if I didn't say, you know, Houston and, and Armani Collins and um, just a variety of guys that, that, you know, maybe the statistics don't jump off the, the page, but they are a huge, huge ingredient into to us winning games. Heading into the MEAC tournament, it'll be a neutral site games, the Scope Arena in Norfolk, Virginia. But your Wildcat team has won the second most games in Division One history on the road in a regular season. Winning on the road is not easy to do. What does it take for this team to have that grit and that resolve to win on the road and post some big second half comebacks too? And it doesn't matter what sport, what level, uh, what time of year, um, winning away from the home uh, confines is, is extremely difficult. But again, that's, that's a testament to our guys. Um, you know, we, we try to challenge them in, in, um, in a lot of different areas with, with our strength and conditioning and with our practice plans. Um, but really, our guys have come with a laser focus, uh, specifically here in the second half of the year. A key moment for Bethune-Cookman on the road this year, this team, this program, was at Coppin State right before that Morgan State game. Your team came back to win in the second half, and the senior Brandon Tab went over 1,000 points in his career. He became the 30th Wildcat all-time to go over 1,000 points in his career, and you pointed out afterward he did so in less than two seasons. So what does that speak to his ability? Uh, after that game, uh, he was so much more excited that we were able to find a way to win. 
And uh, did he enjoy 34 points? I'm sure he did. Uh, I was never good enough to score 34, so I don't know what that feels like. But, <laughs> but he scored 34, got 1,000, and yet all I could talk about was it gave us an opportunity to win and, and continue to push forward in these standings. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Best of luck to you and the Wildcats, the MEAC tournament in Norfolk, Virginia. Thank you so much. At BCU, every game is a life lesson. A chance to show faith, respect, and sportsmanship. It's bigger than winning or losing. There's life beyond the game. Opportunities beyond the classroom. Responsibilities to our community. On a much larger stage. As ambassadors to the world. Leaders, champions, we are Wildcats. And we believe in faith, integrity, and love. Enter to learn, depart to serve. That's the Bethune Cookman way. Go Wildcats! The DNA of Bethune-Cookman comes from the heart of a great woman whose legacy lives on today in each and every Wildcat. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Great leaders always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us? In the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, success for our student athletes isn't just measured by wins and losses, points on the scoreboard, or individual stats. It's also measured by their performance in the classroom, in the community, and ultimately graduation. Our student athletes aren't just playing to win a single game, they're playing to win at life. Because games end, but life keeps on going. The MEAC, educating student athletes for the game of life. Brian will continue the program getting to meet the forward Chantrez Davis, the junior out of Atlanta, leads the MEAC in double-doubles. Ryan Ritter has said over and over again, when Chantrez Davis plays at least 30 minutes, this Wildcat team plays much different. We've seen that this year. I don't think any more needs to be said about the young man. You just said it, a junior from Atlanta. That's guts, determination, a hard-nosed area. You're talking about people that, that really think that that's a football state. It's a basketball area as well. You know, Georgia has produced some great athletes. Chantrez Davis from the ATL is just another one of those. And you already said his double doubles, his contributions on the court. It, it, it goes without being said that you look at that stat sheet. Sean Trace Davis is near the top of it every time. And when you do that, there's a W in that column as well. From one ATL in to another, let's meet Sean Trace Davis. I'm a very genuine person. I'm real cool to get to know. Um, and then secondly, I'm playing the sport that I love. You know, playing in front of my family, friends, my teammates, my brothers. No matter what the situation is, I can have a bad day, but I know at the end of the day, if I get around people who I love and people who just care about me, I just feel like I'm home. Uh, one thing about this school that I really realized that it's not only just the basketball, the sports or anything, it's your professors, uh, the people on campus. Uh, you, you, be, you meet different nationalities. You got people from Jamaica, people from all over the country that, that will really open your eyes. You got the beach. Come on, like you got the beach right around the corner. You can't, you can't, you can't miss that. Um, and just the love on campus, like everybody love each other. I mean, it's an older school, but it feel like it feels so new because everybody is joining it. Like it's an HBCU, like it's a together. It's like one big family. Uh, I knew Coach Ritter really just because uh, on the court wise, but I didn't know like the real details behind what was going on, him getting his job, and then. The relationship me and Coach T had is, is crazy. And then the statement that he made in Kansas, he's telling me, I'm gonna coach you one day. And now I look at it as in like, he knew, he saw something before I even seen it. So he came to the rescue, he helped me out with a lot of things. Um, and now I'm at BCU and I'm trying to, well, we turn a lot of hands around BCU right now. After, we, after the Christmas um, break, we, uh, we had two tough losses up in Washington. Um, and then we came back real early, the coach got us back real early. And then we knew that his feeling, he didn't really want to like, you know, say anything because we felt like we disappointed him. But then we came back to practice and we just showed him like, you, you're not in this by yourself. Like we got your back. Like you take your time out from your people and you come here and like help us out to get to where we want to get to. And then when we came back and we put the pieces together, we started rolling, winning on the road, winning at home. And it was just like, the, the train just kept going, just kept going, kept going, and we kept saying, we kept telling each other after every game, like we can do this, like we can really do this. And then once we start winning four in a row, five in a row, we on the winning streak, we just kept saying like, this is, this is our destiny. Like right now, we control our destiny right now. As we just keep taking steps every single day, as our coach say, do your job. Like, make today your best day because you can't get this day back. And then we take really 
like notice of what he's talking about, and then like, and now we had to step right now to really win the MIAD tournament championship right now for the Thorn Cookman. That means a lot to me. Um, that's a big goal, not just for me, but for the school also. Um, and a lot of kids who are on the, on the program too. Um, we got a couple seniors who, who like really like plan their tail off for us. Uh, we got Brandy Tab, Jeffrey Outdoor, Jamal Gaines. We got them playing, and I just feel like they deserve this. Like this is their last time putting on a Bethune Cookman uniform. So we just feel like we deserve, we deserve we need to get them this right here. At BCU, every game is a life lesson. A chance to show faith, respect, and sportsmanship. It's bigger than winning or losing. There's life beyond the game. Opportunities beyond the classroom. Responsibilities to our community. On a much larger stage. As ambassadors to the world. Leaders, champions, we are Wildcats. And we believe in faith, integrity, and love. Enter to learn, depart to serve. That's the Bethune Cookman way. Go Wildcats! The DNA of Bethune-Cookman comes from the heart of a great woman whose legacy lives on today in each and every Wildcat. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Great leaders always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us? In the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, success for our student athletes isn't just measured by wins and losses, points on the scoreboard, or individual stats. It's also measured by their performance in the classroom, in the community, and ultimately graduation. Our student athletes aren't just playing to win a single game, they're playing to win at life. Because games end, but life keeps on going. The MIAC, educating student athletes for the game of life. And we're back to the BC Wildcat Basketball Insider Show alongside Brian Harvey. I'm Nolan Alexander. We have heard from Chantrez Davis, head coaches Ryan Ritter on the men's side, Vanessa Blair-Lewis for the women's team as well. And we heard Coach Lewis speak before about that unique Baltimore trip that she wasn't able to make. Instead, Chandler McCabe stepped in to fill her shoes. Chandler did an absolutely wonderful job. The Wildcats went 2-0. Let's get her thoughts on that big weekend in Baltimore. Well, Coach McCabe, welcome to the big stage. Thank you, thank you. We just heard from your head coach, Vanessa Blair Lewis, who said watching the games in the Baltimore weekend was awful, <laughs> not being able to be with the team. Yeah. I take it your experience wasn't awful. What do you remember about the weekend? Uh, it wasn't awful, no. I mean, you know, you get two wins on the road, it's always a good thing. Um, but it was definitely an experience, to say the least. Um, you know, the nerves kind of went away as soon as the game started. It was just another game. Um, but it was definitely something brand new to me and to have Coach Travis and Coach Frank help me back there was huge. Uh, what was it like when Coach Vanessa Blair Lewis told you, I'm not going to be able to make this trip, I want you to go out there and lead the team? Well, to tell the, the real true story, um, Coach told us actually I was in this seat right here. Hmm. Um, and she Perfect. drew up a play <laughs> on the board and she was like, I need a new name for this player. And we were like, what are you, what are you talking about? So she drew a pregnant lady basically on the board and we we're like coach what is going on so she told us and so we're I literally twisted my ankle I'm out of excitement we're so excited I'm jumping in the air and then she says by the way I'm six months pregnant so we didn't even know didn't know she was pregnant and then she looked at me and was like this is you and I was like excited and then I got so nervous so I needed a few days she's like we're gonna talk and I was like coach I need a few days to go to sleep um, and kind of figure out, you know, let myself be okay with this. So, mm -hmm. but she did a great job preparing us as a staff and the girls did a great job executing the game plan. Were there any last words of advice that she gave you either leading up to the game or before the team left? Yeah, she, um, you know, she sent me a text and she knew I'd kind of be in my own little world in this little huddle and I, uh, I knew she'd be texting me any second. Um, she just kind of said, you know, there's no one I trust more. There's no one I would want to be in this spot. And it gave me a lot of confidence. And, you know, she kind of mentioned that we came in with this group, you know, this, this, this senior class is really special to me. This is my fourth year here. They came in with me and we kind of raised them together and that was really important. What was your pregame speech to the team before Coppin State? Um, before Coppin, I kind of explained to the team um, that everybody has somebody they play for. Um, it's a big role. Um, you know, the, each girl has somebody different, whether it's their mom or their parent. I told them it was my mom who I do everything for. But I also explained in the locker room that everybody has one common person right here, right now. Everybody, the managers, coaches, players, everyone has one common person 
why we're here at Bethune Cookman, and that's Coach Blair Lewis. And regardless if she's here or not, she wants us to win. That's what we have to do. We have one job to go win. Wildcats prevailed, winning in overtime on the road again, and it came really hairy down there at the end. Morgan State had a huge comeback. Mm -hmm. What was your message to the team there in the waning minutes of that ball? You know, I, that was the big message before that game was the identity of Bethune-Cookman University women's basketball is defense. So that was our biggest thing is we had to get stops down the stretch, um, which we ended up doing really well in the third quarter, but we couldn't convert on offense. Mm -hmm. um, so really, Brianna Battle took the game into her own hands and hit those two big threes, and tied up the score and I knew once we got to overtime we would win. It was just a matter of getting there. Well, you went 2-0 and over the weekend in Baltimore and then the next day after the Morgan State game, it was your birthday. <laughs> Did you think of a better birthday present? Literally not one in the entire world. It was exactly mm -hmm. what I wanted. Coach McCabe, you did a great job over on the sidelines. I was watching you the whole time. I thought you did a good job working the refs a little bit, too. <laughs> <laughs> but the Wildcats were 2-0. and The team played well, and best of luck the rest of the way to you and the Lady Wildcats wrapping up this season. Thank you so much, Nolan. And that's about all the time we have today here in the BC Wildcat Basketball Insider Show. Brian, hopefully the next time we come here to Storkmore Gymnasium, we're talking about some hardware for the Wildcats and the Lady Wildcats, but for that to happen, what's it gonna take for these teams? It's gonna take hard work and determination. It's also gonna take some grit. It's gonna take them going up to Norfolk and being able to sustain day after day of being able to play on the road in a neutral environment, if you wanna call it neutral. That's a Norfolk and Hampton area, as well as Baltimore not being too far away. And, and you talk about North Carolina Central, North Carolina AT, short drive as well. It's gonna take them being able to manufacture some wins in an environment that is not more gymnasium. They've done a good job at that this season. They're gonna to have to keep that up and they're also going to have to be able to say, hey, we play Thursday, we play Friday, we play Saturday. They did it in AAU ball. That's not too far away. They just did it a couple years ago. Now come in, do it again, get that tournament mentality inside of you. Know that it is one and done, but also I think we play good with the pressure on our back. And I think they also, when they're faced against the wall, cats come out and fight. All right, that's going to about wrap it up here for the BCU Wildcat Basketball Insider Show. If you want to follow along with the Wildcats from Norfolk and you can't make it, one last time, Brian, where do fans need to go? BCUathletics.com, BCU Athletics on Twitter, on Instagram, on Snapchat, and also MEX Sports because that's where we're going to have the Tournament Central and WLE 1380. The cat, this man right here, Nolan Alexander, will have all the action for you. Just make sure you follow us, make sure you follow him, and make sure you help us lift the hardware when it comes back to Daytona because, Nolan, it's coming back. It's coming back. We're certainly hoping so. For my co-host, Brian Harvey, I'm Nolan Alexander here from Historic Moore Gymnasium where the Wildcats were great at home this season. Thanks to you. You were loud and proud, and we look forward to seeing you in Norfolk doing the exact same. Hail Wildcats!